All right, let me know when you can see it, Heather. Yes, we can see it. All right, awesome. So yeah, well, let's go and get started. So thanks everybody for joining another Snowflake Meetup here, Carolina Snowflake Meetup group, of course, where we try to have a lot of fun at least once a month um, on a Monday and talk shop and all sorts of good Snowflake uh, stuff. So excited to bring you guys this one for security best practices. And if the internet connection holds up, we can actually see some hands-on within Snowflake worksheets. But um, so many things to, to cover here. And I think this is going to have to be like a two or three, maybe even a four-part series, just because there's so much to cover. And uh, I mean, we could, we could dive in on each one of the security topics alone would go an hour. And we'd have a, a great time talking about it. So if you guys can hear me OK, what we usually do is just kind of go over the meetup rules. Again, we're virtually meeting, but one of these days uh, we'll be able to have a few meetups all over the country, specifically in the Carolinas, but again, all over the country. But for now, if you have a question, you know, feel free to, to send it into the chat. And we've got folks uh, on the team who are looking for those questions and the raised hands and all that stuff. Uh, you don't have to turn your video on, of course, um, if you don't want to. And uh, please be kind, go mute. And then, of course, be social, ping us on Data Lake House. Uh, we're on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, all the, all the right places to be. But without the social context for a moment, let's talk about tonight's agenda. And that is talking about security and role-based um, access control in Snowflake. And then also we're going to we're going to try to do a security walkthrough, talk about some basics of creating those concepts, uh, talking about the power of roles in Snowflake, discussing advanced security concepts, and then just kind of opening it up for any further discussion. So as always, we've got our other uh, meetups out there on YouTube where you guys can um, watch those uh, whenever you like. And please subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like the content. So as you guys know, Snowflake is the data cloud and it is the near limitless, limitless scale uh, system for which is great for data warehousing and application development for ingesting data, uh, governing your data and providing access, which we're going to talk about tonight and, and scaling that entire concept um, pretty much, like I said, almost limitlessly uh, based on the current uh, cloud architecture that we've all come to love. And uh, obviously it solves lots of problems. Some of us have been doing Snowflake for a while and some of us are new to it. So just for those folks who are somewhere new or between, uh, you know, really it's all about uh, solving the problem of getting your data into a system for quick, fast uh, transformation and analysis capability. So you can get it out there to all of your con consumption needs and re regardless if that's application development type endpoints uh, your analytic system, operational, data science, anything you can name um, that's out there. Uh, so I think we still have a typo here. This is from like three meetups ago. We've got uh, uh, really security power and purpose, not task power and purpose. Task power, that was like, oh my goodness, what was that, Heather? That was like four meetups ago. I don't know. It was, it was a while ago. But we're talking security tonight. So I, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun with security for a moment just to kind of talk about a few of the things that really um, go with security, some terms some people might be familiar with, some, some not. So, so security is kind of interesting. So I'm a de definition guy and I really like to understand the you know, um, etymology of, of words and all that type of thing. So you know, this is the first definition to camp for security, right? The state of being free from danger or threat. Uh, well, we could say that about our data, right? But I think the other one, which is the access, is probably a little bit more of what we're talking about when we talk about security, which is, you know, means of approaching or entering a place or, act, you know, using the actual word, you know, accessing um, something, open, giving, you know, opening it up for some reason. And so I think that's really where um, our back comes into play, right? So the role-based um, access control uh, versus necessary security, because security is pretty broad. But role-based access, and you could say authentication or authorization control, I've, I've seen people do it different ways for like their specific point in the conversation. And so I think when you read the Snowflake documentation, you do see that a lot. You see the role-based um, access control. 
And, and, and that's also something that's been around for a long time, you know, like uh, Windows operating system has had that for a long time. Uh, I think Linux and Unix also call it far back. So, but all this is really getting down to the point of how it's used in Snowflake. We want to talk about the best practices and what Snowflake's security or RBAC does is it really provides that concept of least privilege. And this is super important. So, you know, whenever you're in the room talking tech speak, uh, you know, somebody uh, inevitably is going to come up with this concept of least privilege. And that means like, you know, if you've got the choice of giving somebody access and you could give them all the access they ask for, even things they don't ask for, or you could start with like the most granular access possible like which one is actually preferred. And so that preference for like the lowest amount of access possible is what we call least, least privilege. And, uh, you know, Snowflake does lots of cool things. I mean, their, their RBAC control goes all the way through, you know, looking at, um, you know, column level, row level restrictions, um, personal identifying information, you know, tagging and other restrictions. So it's, it can get very, very granular. Sometimes it's so granular, it's annoying but uh, it's there for good reason. And then one other thing we usually talk about security when we're talking, especially to people who aren't security experts, uh, is this idea between authentication and authorization. Actually, it's like a great like junior developer pop quiz question, right? Like authentication, right? Means you, you can actually um, get into the system, right? Um, and, and how you're doing it. And then authorization is, you know, what you actually have access to once you're in the system. So I, I love that interview question. So really what is, uh, when we talk about our back, you know, what are we gonna drill into? So, you know, again, it's got loads of use cases. I, I kind of highlighted a few of them kind of jumping ahead, right? Like app dev, you know, you guys know that Snowflake has APIs that you can connect to even from like uh, your own custom built application. Like if you're built like a Node.js or Python application, you can connect directly to that. We do a lot of that work, uh, single sign-on, uh, so when we talk about like Okta or Auth0, some more of the latest and greatest cloud-based authentication systems, um, multi-factor authentication, we'll, I'll talk about that towards the end. But other use cases like departmental or domain level restriction. So some of these things are common sense, but you know, not everybody's actually implemented our back security. So, and then just kind of jumping down to the bottom, which is really interesting. So there's there's this term that we use, uh, if you guys are familiar with like Data Vault or Data Vault 2.0 concepts, which is a, a really amazing way to build, um, you know, great stable analytical um, repositories like data warehouses and such. Um, there's this concept of ontology and it's really this, this term that just really means the relationship between things. And the reason I like this term for RBAC or role-based access control is because when you start talking to someone about, hey, how should, how should we set up our roles in Snowflake? And I think the first, one of the first principles there is obviously at least privilege, but probably the very second principle there is maintenance. Like you want to make your security uh, in Snowflake, and this goes for almost anything I would say, uh, as easy to maintain as possible. So that's one of our best practices, right? Like how, how simple can the maintenance of this thing be? And so when you start talking about these ontologies, right, you could think about like all these different branches, right? Things are related, but how are they related? And what's the best way to relate them? Uh, very similar to like a taxonomy, but it's kind of like the, the, the metaphysical, you know, uh, relationships we're talking about. So, um, you know, you could basically draw lines all over the place, but it has to make sense for your particular implementation. So what we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to jump into is an actual walkthrough of role-based authentication control, right? High level. And so we'll do this by creating a user. We're gonna create some roles. Uh, we're gonna create what we call like a team role. And then we're gonna try to throw in this role, this RBAC hierarchy for inheritance. So that's another another best practice that we, we like to throw out there, which is inheritance. And I, I've got a good diagram for that. So we're gonna do that in a few different steps here. And I, I guess just a sanity check. I didn't check and no one, no one mentioned it to me, but have my slides been moving as I've been talking? <laughs> yes, Christian, they're moving. <laughs> okay, thank you. I hope somebody say something, okay. So just real quick, this idea of like um, hierarchical inheritance and, and roles. And again, if you look at the ontology, your mileage may vary, 
you know, I think we think there's a, there is a proper way to do this from like day one when you set up your security or a way you can, if you, you've already set up security and, and you know, your implementation of Snowflake's two, three, four, five years old, whatever it may be, there's still a way to go in and adjust the security so it's clean it makes sense you can you get visibility from all the roles uh that type of thing so if you see down here at the bottom right so kind of talking like a good practice of this role and in, um, inheritance what that actually means so if you have a role typically the one of the lowest level roles you can get is just read only and that's kind of like hey you have usage on this table or this this schema or this database so you have read access, and that's something you give like you know, very generic person, maybe on the team, uh, if, if that's you know something like that. And so that's read only access to certain objects, schemas, tables, etc. Then you will maybe create another role, and let's call this the read write role, right? So the RW role. Now, what you would do is you would assign you would, you would grant the permission on the the on the RW role you would grant the role of RO to the role RW. And so that means that any of the tables or schemas that you granted read only to for the read only role, uh, the read write role will automatically inherit the, the read only role. So it can, it can read everything the read only role can read. And the read write role, then you can add specific privileges on the read write role. So you can give it like, you know, insert, update, delete, and, and your knowledge may vary here. So this is where good documentation comes into place because you might want to say, hey, we want our, our W role to only be insert and update. And obviously it'll inherit from read only so it can do select. And uh, we've seen that many times. But we've seen other groups where they want, hey, read write should be delete and truncate, insert and update, right? And then obviously select. So that type of thing is where you start getting to maybe not the ontology of things, but maybe just a, a good business decision on what the labeling of the roles actually means. So to, to kind of circumvent that, we've done things where we've done like RWX role and the RWX role would be insert, update, delete, truncate, but the RW role would be only insert, update, right? So different ways you could look at it. And then usually on top, the top role is kind of like the power user role. So maybe you don't want to give like ownership role and we'll talk about some of these things here in a minute. But maybe you wanted to say, hey, this is like the the owner, the or no, no, owner is bad, <laughs> bad labeling of words. But maybe you want to say, hey, this is the power user over the finance schema, or this is the power user over the marketing database, right? If you're really trying to segment, you know, who can do what. And so now that power user, it could be a label only role, like it's just a, a role so you can give give somebody like the marketing director, for example, the power user role over the marketing database. And they would inherit read write, they would inherit read only. So they could do most things in that database. But if you don't add additional privileges to it, then it's just a, what we call like a label role versus a, a privileged role um, or, or a higher privileged role. Now, the great thing about this construct here is that if I make a single change to the read only role, right? So this is where the maintenance nightmare is completely, uh, well, mainly set at ease, right? So if I make a modification to the read only role, then all of these roles above it automatically get that same privilege. So I don't have to go into all these multiple different roles and assign different or the same privilege three times or four times or five times. So that's the great thing about it. All right, so let's jump in for a moment and see if we can just build a couple examples like in the next 15, 15 20 minutes. But uh, I don't know, what, what do you guys think? I mean, this is, this is a meetup. How many people have actually set up like role hierarchies and um, maybe done some more of the advanced things like we're gonna review here. Anybody really have any cool security stories that they've uh, like to share? Anything they've worked on in the past? Okay. I think one one piece here, and maybe we can talk about it uh, throughout the rest of the time here. So you get data level security to individual records, and then there's also the ability to do column level uh, security uh, within within the role. Mm -hmm. Those are always like 
I know in, in some minds, it's, well, that's the same use case. In other minds, it's, oh, I guess I didn't even realize that was an option or I need to have it, but how do I treat both of those differently? Absolutely. Well, and that brings up a good point, right? Because in Snowflake, you do have different editions of the software. So you have the standard edition, you have the enterprise edition and so forth. And some of those security concepts are only available in the enterprise edition, right? So that's also something, um, I don't know if we, we wrote that down or not, but um, <laughs> to cover, but that's definitely something to be mindful of, right? Yeah, because you, you could, you could be sitting there thinking, hey, you know, we've got uh, Snowflake, let's do column-based security. And then next thing you know, it's like, uh, you know, you need to, you need the, the higher version. But, but I think most, most customers are, are, are on enterprise, right? So I think that's okay. All right, so let's do a couple things. Let's create a couple of roles real quick. So if I go over here and say uh, roles, so what I've done really quickly is I, I've just taken this very basic script. Actually, it comes from one of our previous um, uh, scripts, so streams. I'm going to call this security. All right, take that out. All right. And so I'm just using a basic table and um, we create some roles here. All right. So what's obviously super great about Snowflake is everything can be done in the command line, which is great for like repeatability. And if you guys haven't used something like Terraform yet for Snowflake, uh, you know, definitely drop a note and, you know, love to get you guys up to speed on ter using Terraform and kind of doing more of this DevOps app dev approach to uh, utilizing um, certain tools to enable Snowflake um, capability and deployments. But so if we create a role here, create role, if not exists. All right, and let's call this, we're gonna call it read only. I'm actually gonna call it uh, marketing, all right, RO role. And I also think that naming conventions are very important in security because you could have a user, right, call it RO. I mean, somebody, somebody could come along, right, in the company, they could start with, you know, one approach and then somebody else comes along and they wanna come into another approach. And when you talk about that uh, ontology, right, you might get to a point where you're kind of like, ah, I really wish they hadn't used that name for a user because that would have been a great name for a role or vice versa. So uh, oftentimes I find it's easier for, especially for roles to do um, underscore role at the end. So you're absolutely certain it's a role uh, for uh, the particular circumstance, right? So we'll create the RO role and our example is gonna be marketing, right? And we'll create another one over here for RW, right? And I did create a table over here so maybe something super simple, and uh, I'm doing this real time, obviously. So uh, probably a couple of hiccups along the way. So let me go and see. Let me just run these real quick. But I'm going to have to update my privilege here. So let me see. Of course not, right? So we come over here, and what do we say? Let's do use role <laughs> security app. I mean, let's see what happens here. Should work for us. Right, so we've got that role created and we've got that role created, All right? So we've got two roles in the system, just kind of keep it super simple. And then if we want to go ahead and like grant some access, right? So what will we grant? So we could just simply grant, you know, grant usage on database, demo DB. And so this is one of the things, you know, we talk about with least privilege. And we thought about scripting this in advance, but what we found was that like security, we talk about as least privilege, like this is, the best way to kind of see, and we could probably even test this real time, which is probably the goal. Uh, so grant usage on database uh, demo DB, which is over here. And you saw, I just created a table a moment ago. Let's see if that's still living. So it's right there. So we'll say also, um, actually, no, I'm gonna step through this actually real quick. So I'm only gonna grant access to demo DB just real quick. Cause it, hey, it's a security meetup after all. And it's really cool if, if you know, if you never had the time to actually do this before, it's really cool to actually see it kind of unfurl itself, right? So um, really quickly, I'm in the data lake calls role, ASEG marketing. And so another best practice here, just to make sure I, I cover <laughs> cover the, the, the ground and the, the groundwork here, uh, so I don't get slapped on the internet for not doing the best practice. So typically what happens is if you, once we grant this, right? Or actually once we create it, uh, the, the, the preference is for you to grant um, this role to sysadmin. So, you know, 
if I create a role in theory, again, this is all about the security. That's why I said it's, it's complicated enough that we could spend an hour on every single topic. Uh, grant role marketing our role to role sys admin, and then do that again over here. So you know if you're if you're working on Snowflake and you're you're the um, you know the dishwasher, the cook, and you know everything else, or if it, if you have an admin, uh, you know this is something you in theory should be doing every time and. Um, Let's see, for grants, I, I in theory should use this admin, but let's see over here. Yeah, so it'll still let me do the grant here, which is fine. So I'm good with that. All right, so now the sysadmin has it because, you know, sysadmin should have, you know, um, roles are inherited, right? So your, your uh, account admin has sysadmin access in theory. And then if you have a user that's truly your system administrator, they should be able to see every role in the system, right? Because they need to administer the system and it's not granted by default. So uh, I'm gonna come over and grant usage on database demo DB to, and I'm just gonna do this to the RO role. Right. And now since I've got one basic grant, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grant uh, role um, RO to role RW. Right. So now this is your this is the beginning of that inheritance, right? So if I if I and if that's too small, hopefully somebody will let me know. So if this is the grant here on the database, so that's your that's your privilege access for usage to RO. And now if I if I grant that to RO, then if I grant RO to RW, then RO can see also that database, right? Um, so we'll do this a couple different ways. And so now I'm going to grant myself, I think I'm uh, grant role. Let's just copy that. I'll speed that up a little bit. So I'm going to grant the RO role. Actually, I'll just do the RW. Just kind of cut to the chase a little bit. Um, no, I'm actually, I'm going to do, do RO. Sorry, I thought about that. To Now I can do the user. And I think my name is ASU Marketing. So I'm going to try to run it, just run all this through here. There we go. Okay. So those are all executed. So now if I go over here and I change my role, actually, I'll just do it down here. So uh, use role. And I have this role, so I can use it. And now let's see what it does. Okay. So it shrinks that for me. And of course, I have to do refresh. You know, that's the other thing about security. Inside, well, programmatically, I haven't seen any issues. We do a lot of Python, we do a lot of Java, we do a lot of app dev with Snowflake. And I haven't seen any issues once you set the role there. But I have noticed for many years now, if you change the role here in your worksheet, you know, the, the, one of the best things you can do is change the role. And if it's a very critical role where you're trying to use the left hand side, just go ahead to a new, new worksheet and do it there or set it up top here so it becomes like the, the main role in your session and then um, click a new worksheet and then everything should work clear for you every single time. But if you are just using the worksheet and you're trying to do everything in the same thing, make sure you use refresh. We've, uh, we've worked with a lot of different groups who come back and say, well, I changed my role and I'm supposed to have this access and I don't see it. <laughs> And then it's, hey, did you click the refresh button? It's like, oh, that's what that does. Yes, that's what that does. So keep that in mind as you, you guys are done. All right, so next thing we can see here is once we switch to that role and we did the refresh, we have usage, but I don't see any of the schemas, even for my read-only role, right? So that's what's interesting about um, you know, the, the granularity of security, right? The usage versus select. So just because I granted usage on the database doesn't mean I have access to any of the user built tape uh, schemas or tables. So I, I'd have to explicitly go in and um, and do that. So I would go down here and I would grant usage on schema. And I think I've got the schema name up here. And I'll do that to the 
read only role. I'm trying to think of a scenario if, if, there, if I did it to the read write role and then couldn't see it and then flipped over, but it's going to be the same thing. I think the, the point here is being made. Oh, I've got to switch my roles back and I will just use security admin to do the grant. Do the grant, then I'll switch back to that role, right? And now I can see the schema, but I can't see the tables, right? So this is where you get into um, a, you know, other very interesting situation. So this one's actually pretty cool. And if no one's ever actually done this before, um, you know, maybe maybe you get to learn something new here. And I'm actually looking for um, the, the the core syntax that I need, but uh, the next step here logically would be to go ahead and uh, give access at the table level. Now, what's interesting about this is there's a lot of different table access that you, in theory, need to give. And so if we take a look at that, it would look something like this. And so say grant usage on table. And now I get to the point where I want to uh, use some probably some fully qualified domain uh, naming here. So I'd want to do schema dot, right? And um, so grant use on table two. And again, I'll do it to the read only role because right now I'm just talking about the ability to see um, and you know read from the table. I'm not, not going to get in the truncate and delete and you know all privileges and that type of thing here. This is just kind of a, a quick um, baseline review here. So I forgot what the table name is, but I've got it up here. So I call it W customer stage and I've got underscores in there and I did not create the object with double quotes. So it is not case sensitive. And uh, so now I should be able to go back over here, select this role again, come back over here, grant that access, uh, usage on table, I do wrong here. Let's see, oops, got the wrong right. Oh, yeah, just do select. Okay, so I just granted select on the table to the RO role. So we'll refresh, and there we go. We've got a customer stage table. And now I should be able to go over here and do select all from this table. Ah, of course I need a warehouse. So I'm just gonna pick one of the generic warehouses for now. Oh, and because that role that we don't have any access to any warehouses. So let's, let's grant access to a warehouse. So let's do that. Yeah, there's a warehouse in there. Okay, daily accounts WH. So back to naming conventions. So what I'm gonna do here is I will grant, I will uh, create a new script down here or new RBAC, I guess. Um, so grant usage on warehouse, uh, it's called data lake house. And data lake house is always spelled as one word. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Uh, data lake house WH. And again, with the suffixes are so cool. I mean, like use them. Uh, WH for warehouse, role for role. Uh, and there's some other cool stuff and that we do, you know, like un underscore SVC. If you're creating a user that's a service account user, you know, let people know that's a service account user belongs to Looker or logging analytics or Power BI or whatever else you're using, right? Because why would you use an actual user name for the application? It's a service account. So you'd use underscore SVC. So this is all part of the security best practices concept, right? So grant usage on warehouse uh, day like 32. And this will be to, we'll just grant it to the read only role. This is a pretty common practice again. And it's just basic usage, right? So it's not some of the other warehouse. Um, uh, triggers and grants. Uh, do security admin. In theory, I could be sysadmin doing this, but you know, we're, we're just making it through the through the meetup here. All right. And so now if I switch back to this marketing role, 
and I try to run select, uh, got it selected here, so it should work. All right, sweet. So now we've, we've got that access. And if I wanted to, um, I think I have, did I, did I give myself access to the RW role? Did I not? Nope, I just did RO role. But let me give myself access to RW role. Actually, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna create another role here really quickly. Just to show you another thing that's a consideration for the RBAC security that uh, no one really talks about a lot with Snowflake. And it's one of the last things I'll kind of just cover here. Just again, tidbits, insights, best practices, and so forth. So I'm gonna I just have to create a role. And I'm gonna call this marketing, um, I'm gonna call it marketing admin role. So this is my marketing admin role, of course. Oh, your security admin, sorry. And we know it doesn't exist, so we're just gonna create that there. All right, so now we're gonna grant um, our W here uh, to add and roll, which also has RO. And I'm just gonna quickly do that. Okay, so again, adding to the, the hierarchy. So now we've got, we actually have this hierarchy going on here with the marketing roles. Read only, write, and admin here. And admin currently is just a label role, so it's nothing too crazy. And I'm gonna grant marketing admin role to ASH Marketing, which is my current uh, user. Okay, so now I should be able to use marketing role, but here's something that's interesting. If I go here just to kind of look at the roles, I think I need to refresh to see everything here. I'm scared to refresh because it might actually take me out. I'm actually scared to refresh because I've got limited bandwidth here. But um, what I wanted to show here was typically what you see is all the roles you have access to in here. So if I were to, I really don't want to refresh the page. Uh, so even though I didn't get assigned directly the RW role, right? I would see the RW role in this list. So just to, just to be clear to make sure that that's coming through for you guys. So every role that you get assigned and the inheritance, uh, I think it's unfortunate. I think uh, there should be a flag or preference for this but every role will show up in this list for you. So if you create 400 roles for your company and you, you get assigned the highest level of all 400 roles, right? Um, maybe that's 40 roles you get assigned. You'll actually see all 400 roles in here on your list. So I think that's kind of a, a I won't call it a glitch, but I think some Snowflake needs to, to look into. But in theory, you know, that's why we set up a default role when you create a user. You, you set the user's default role. So when they log into an application, they, they have one primary role that they're going to use. And so that's a, that's a good tidbit right there. Okay. So we've got this granted. And if I switch over to that role, Yeah, I think that was the primary thing I wanted to just kind of highlight. Let me just go and refresh and see if it works. And then we can jump over to some other discussions. So everything should be the same here. And then I'm just gonna click refresh. Hopefully there's not too many bogeys. Let's see what happens. All right, nobody's frozen yet. Let me put out a note, this is gonna go. So let's let's keep going and we can wait for that uh, to come back here in a minute. All right. All right. So that was a real quick our back example. We talked about the hierarchies. We talked about granting. We kind of went through some basics of security. 
Um, there, there's so much that we could cover there just through scripting, but I want I'm very cognizant of the time and making sure to see if you guys have any general uh, questions coming out of this basic concept. But what I do want to jump into just real quick is this concept of SSO, you know, using something like Auth0 or Okta, if you guys are familiar with those concepts. So this is the concept when you are have a centralized, um, uh, usually authentication system to help you manage your users that have access to your application. In this situation, your application can also be Snowflake. So let's check one thing real quick, see if it um, actually did what I, what I said it was gonna do. Yes, it did. You, so last point, we'll, we'll jump on, I'll move away from the, the, this part of the worksheet example. So you can see here, I never assigned, let's make sure I'm not making myself all too liar here. Yes. So I never assigned directly to my user, which is ASCG marketing, I never assigned the RW role directly. I only assigned RW to the admin role and I gave admin role uh, to my current user, but I can see the RW role in this list. And so it's a question of, and maybe we should all sign a petition. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm sure it's a, it's a feature, not a bug, but we can see the RW role in this list, even though I was only granted the admin, I was only granted the RO. So now you can see from the, um, even though this is a best practice to do this role-based access control, inheritance, create the hierarchy, use the ontology concepts. But if you have a large implementation and you're doing the correct security, if you're a power user, you're gonna see a heck of a lot of roles in here. Um, and I think it's okay because I think as a power user, you should be able to use the switching capability. You should know the syntax inside of Snowflake to be able to navigate it um, with certain levels of ease. But if, you, if there are applications where you've given end users loads of roles and haven't designed your security structure correctly, they could be in a situation where they go try to log in and there's a role drop down, and they've got 150 roles in there and they don't know which one to pick. And then you've kind of bumped into you know, a situation. So that's where we get into creating things like team roles and things like that on top of the, um, the, the ontology roles and the inherited roles. And um, we can save that for another, another discussion or maybe we should do a webinar on it, I'm not sure. Uh, but lots of best practices. I'll just jump around to one other thing here, just uh, see if I can get there. So let me switch roles over here to account admin. And you know, we like to talk about um, multi-factor authentication. Let me actually just log out and I can just show it real quick. I don't think it's necessary to drill into it, but what we recommend is, a, and this is probably one of the last best practices I'll, I'll show here. What we do recommend is that every administrator of Snowflake set up multi-factor authentication. And so in theory right now, Snowflake only has the one uh, authentication um, MFA protocol or, or tool, which is through Duo, Duo Mobile. So you'll see here in a second, when I, since I've logged out, it'll give me a certain screen to log in. So here, when you turn on uh, SSO, and it's just a configuration uh, that you have to do inside of uh, Snowflake, again, all through SQL, um, you get this option here to sign in uh, using um, SSO. And I'm not gonna click the button and everything, um, but uh, that'll give you the ability that that would currently go through like our Okta platform uh, to do that. And then the second part of that is that um, is the MFA. So one is SSO, and then this is your multi-factor authentication. So if I set this up as an admin, which is the big recommendation, then I can um, get a push on my mobile phone. I'm not showing my camera right now. I get a push on my mobile phone. I'm sure all you guys have this to some degree for your current companies or uh, whatnot. And then I can say, send me a push. It sends me a push. I verify it on my mobile. And if you wait too long, it times out. So let's not wait too long. And then once I click the button on my side, then it lets me in. 
right? So that's absolutely the best practice. If you guys are not doing that, do it right now because I've mentioned this on a previous meetup, as you guys know, very security cautious. Um, if somebody gets a, a hold of your, uh, you know, your URL and they can dictionary attack your um, your credential, you know, your your entire Snowflake is uh, open to being hacked and, and access. So if you guys aren't doing that, make sure you do it. And um, I think with that, let's get back over here and start wrapping up. Uh, so kind of highlight a couple of these things, but um, open that up for discussion. And I guess in wrapping up, as you guys know, we, we try to put all this code out there on, on our GitHub for uh, meetups and, uh, and some of our webinars. And we'll, we'll get the video down uh, as soon as we can and push that up on YouTube. So I didn't see anything come through the chat. So obviously you guys were completely uh, amazed at the security breakthrough and um, you guys already knew all this stuff. That's, that's why there's no questions, so I don't know. But, uh, but I, I do think we need to have a follow-up and maybe drill into some of the specific ones like doing the SSO uh, configuration Maybe look at the kind of the business side of that equation and there's some other things like the rsa um, public keys which is also very interesting um, and and maybe some other devops stuff that's that uh, might be of interest so i so don't see any questions in the chat anybody have any combo topics before we wrap up completely all right well I think this was a pretty quick one, guys. Hopefully it wasn't too much of a onslaught of security. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, next time we're gonna have to do this uh, over beers and, uh, and appetizers and uh, something like that. But soon enough, uh, thank you guys for joining uh, another Carolina Snowflake meetup and we will see you on the next one. Hey, Christian, we got one in the chat. Oh. Uh, yeah, creating roles is admin. Does that mean that they can create objects? Possibly done several times. Uh, I think yeah, so save you, time. Save. All right, just save time. Oh, possibly done the same time. Yeah, I mean, in theory, uh, creating the, the role with sysadmin, does that mean they can create objects? Uh, I, I, actually, I'm trying to think about that one. Uh, creating the role with sysadmin, does that mean they can create objects? I'm just no. Uh, you'd, you'd have to assign specific permissions for them to create the objects. Okay. I was under the impression that sysadmin by default was used to create tables and things like that. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, sysadmin is great for creating all the objects, absolutely, because they have ownership. Uh, th this is actually a really great question. And uh, I I'd love to back into it for like all of maybe a couple of minutes. So what's, what's interesting is this concept of ownership. And some people like having sysadmin be the owner of everything, but uh, th there's, there's actually this privilege uh, called ownership. It's like literally called ownership. So you can say like as, you know, use sysadmin, use role sysadmin. And then let's say there's this table up here that was created before uh, W the customer stage. And you know we could always do show table and see who actually created it. Actually, we can go over here and uh, and see who created it, right? So in this case, we've got the data lakehouse role that created it, right? And uh, so what's interesting about that, and again, those tables were just created to get get the ball rolling here tonight. But if every everything is created by sysadmin, it's it's usually totally fine. But there could be a situation where you want like a complete admin ownership role of like a database or a schema so that that user can go do anything with that schema that like that they want. So a perfect example of this is like, if I did uh, create database, uh, what's, what's a good idea here? Like um, data science, right? Database, right? So I'm the administrator of this database or, or sorry, um, I, I'm the administrator of Snowflake, and I've got this team of data scientists, and they don't want to bug anybody else. They just want a database so they can run all their operations in Snowflake, right? I don't want these guys pinging me every other day, every other hour, asking me for like the most 
granular privilege possible, right? Because now I've got a, I've got a bit of a headache as, as like an admin. So what I would do is I would create this hierarchical role and I would create one like role up here. And this would be data science database admin, just to kind of give you like a basic name, right? I'll call it admin role. Okay. And then I would go in for these, this team and I would create this database, right? Um, for them with this role, basically, just a high level concept, right? And now this role is the one that actually has the, the complete ownership of that database. So if they want to do anything with that database in this, if they have this role, they can do whatever they want. And me as the sysadmin or the account ad admin, I'm not even worried about it because I've locked down every other schema and every other database the way I've wanted to do it based on ontologies and other, uh, other things. But now I can just give this person or this group of people this role. And if they want to create a schema, they can knock themselves out, right? They can go to town tables, delete stuff, whatever they want, it's completely under control. And then I can, I can meter them by giving them a warehouse, something like, you know, I'll, I'll just shorthand it here, right? Database DB, or data science DB um, warehouse, right? And then I can make this, you know, an extra small or whatever. So they have complete access over the database, but they're limited to use this compute so they're not going to go like off the deep end and like, you know, having like a crazy multi-cluster, you know, um, load happening and just run up our utilization and our cost. So oh, that's, hi. that's one great reason for doing that. Perfect. Question, question. So you, do you limit uh, that role to be able to access just one extra small data warehouse? Is that how you do it? So that. That's another great question. Uh, this is kind of a, a gotcha. And I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anything. I'm pretty sure we haven't missed anything on this one. But the um, the the restriction, I, I'm trying, trying to phrase this correctly so that I'm not, not wrong. Um, warehouses are not restricted to a database, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they're granted based on usage. So I can't say, hey, this database here can only use warehouse number two, whatever it is, warehouse X, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have to grant the, the role, in this case, like this admin role, access to a warehouse I create and then limit them to that, that warehouse if that's what I'm doing. But they could always use another warehouse if they have been granted access to a different warehouse. Does that answer your question? Um, so let's say I have access to two different roles. Would mm -hmm. the two data warehouse show up on my selection list? Yes. And if I'm switching to this data science database admin role, mm -hmm. both of the warehouse would be in my selection. Yes, yes, and in, in theory, they would be. Well, let me back up. So you could do this. You know, we just take the example from up here. So if we went with this example down here, we've got a data science database, mm -hmm. and then we, you know, this is a created role, and we say grant usage. Or, you know, this is really let's just say we grant ownership on database DS to role, right? So now that this database is created. This guy has ownership of the database. And then we created, um, we granted usage on, let's call this data science warehouse to this role. Yeah. So that would make the warehouse available to the data science database admin role. Yes. Yep. So they would see it. And if you had another warehouse over here, and let's just call this as what it's called, you know, the warehouse. Stick with the name convention here. And let's actually call this what's another one? It's called marketing warehouse. Okay. So now, if you have this situation, you've got a marketing warehouse and a data science warehouse. So if you switch this role here to 
data science database admin role, then you'll see both of those warehouses and you can run your any of your operations on either of them because of this selection. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that answers your question. Almost, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Almost. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, it, I'll into this. It, and it is it is truly one of those things that you, you will want to test things out, right? Like yes. there's they've built this system so that you can you pretty much have an invention machine here. And you can do so many things so many different ways with so many different combinations. And so at the end of the day, it's really like, what is it you're exactly trying to do? And then just kind of testing it out, but trying to abide by some sort of like standard that you set up so that it's not un unwieldy over time. Yeah. So if it was like a data science team and they said they want a carte blanche, um, I, would, I would probably just give them usage on one warehouse and just give them one database like that. I wouldn't even give them accesses. And of course, you you know, that's hard to say because if you had like the marketing team or the supply chain team or, you know, even the data science team, you know, chances are there's gonna be one or two users that need access to another one, two, three, four databases or schemas within a database. And, um, and, and then you're gonna probably wind up giving them like a data science team role and that data science team role has access to, you know, three or four warehouses and five or six databases. And then it's really up to them to govern themselves on how they're using that, um, you know, how, how they're using the system. Right. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And then I guess as, as we wrap up here, I know we're, we're almost at our, we can keep going, but uh, the other practice I think I mentioned it would be um, I'm trying to move the syntax off the top of my head, but right, uh, update user um, set default role, right, equals, uh, and then can't remember what it is. I think it's just default warehouse, warehouse equals. So every, every user in the system should absolutely have this. And I would script it out if you haven't done this already, because the, the I think the problem with a lot of Snowflake implementations that we come across that if you know we don't help get them going is that this isn't set. So you have this confusion, especially from the business users who are trying to access or data science team, they 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 jump around um, and they want to create objects and different schemas and everything like that because the 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 role is not set when they log in and they're uncertain to like what that role actually gives them access to or what warehouse to use and um big fan of setting warehouses because then you get to if you're in a larger company you get to basically allocate cost to a particular warehouse so if you had for example like tableau was like your main uh, dashboard reporting tool for the entire company and then you had the data science team doing some other stuff like in Python notebooks or whatever. Well, if they're all using the same warehouse, then you don't actually split up like what cost is like for your main like operational usage and what cost is for like let's call it your, your R&D usage. Like you would never see that split correctly. So if you gave the certain team a default warehouse or the, the certain tool a default warehouse, then it would automatically be predicated and you could start getting your like you know, your utilization yeah, closer to accurate for like compute usage and such. All right. Yes, we could talk about this uh, almost all day long, but. Um, do you uh, give a, a default database for user and default schema or is there a way to set it? Not that I know of outside of scripting. We, you can do it in like app dev stuff like where you set the default, you, you, I don't think there is actually a default schema or default database setting. There's just a, a role setting and a default warehouse setting. Mm -hmm. I see, yeah. So you'd, you'd have to fall with, um, within those. You know, there's this concept of default namespace 
but I really haven't seen that used um, too often. So, I mean, in, in, in theory, right? Like the, in theory, the namespace is the, uh, the database and the schema, right? Like, but there, there is no specific, like if you're looking for the variation, right? Because the schema should belong to a specific database. And that's the, that is the namespace. So it's, it's something like, uh, pretty sure that's what it is. And then, so this would be like, you know, demo, demo db dot uh, schema meetup db right 2021, whatever that is, right? I so, think. so now that would, you know, that would set your namespace here. I don't know why they don't call it fully qualified domain name, but um, so now when the user comes in, if you set all the all these right here, you know this is your role, okay. this is your warehouse, this is your database, which comes from the namespace, or um, yeah, and then this would be your schema. So if, yeah, if you had all these set, then when they log in, all four of these are accounted for. So yeah, absolutely, you could that would yes, we don't do that too often though, but yes, you can do it. Thank Thanks you. for bringing that one up. Yeah. This is very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, thank you guys. Uh, tell a friend about us. We're around next month too. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining and taking the time. And uh, again, you can always reach us outside of the channel or outside of the meetup and be happy to talk shop with you guys as usual. But thank you everyone for joining and we'll get this recording out there. I thank you, Christian. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a